Hello, this is Tim Rogers with Dodgers 2080. Today, we are going to talk about the top 10 prospects for the Dodgers as ranked by Baseball America. Um, these lists are kind of a good time for us prospect uh, huggers. And we'll, uh, we'll have the MLB pipeline one uh, when that comes out. That usually comes out in late February to early March. I'll also probably have some write-ups. I know that Dodgers Nation already has some write-ups on the Baseball America one. We're going to go into a little bit more uh, little depth uh, with it and um, also take a look at some of the other th information that Baseball America provides. We're not going to go... Um, we're not going to read from it, but I will re reference the article here. I do. I have a subscription to it. Um, it should be already known, so like I'm not giving away any secrets. But we're going to go from the bottom up. Um, I'm trying something different today, doing a little stand-up, so I don't have no chair. I've got my iPad here um, that has the information. And let's just start from the bottom, uh, the bottom, the, which would be 10. And um, this is Wilman Diaz. He's the guy last year they signed their top uh, international prospect out of Venezuela. And so um, he's exciting. He has a ton of upside. He's a big, big kid for being, um, geez, 17 years old. He's a 6'2". Um, and so he, he's somebody that they say is a shortstop. We're hoping so. Um, just a qu quick scouting report. They say he has all the um, ingredients to hit with advanced plate discipline, short action, and loose, easy swing. So none of, very few of us have even had a chance to watch him play. So it's kind of, well, these, these other experts have had their eyes out there. So let's hope that, uh, that they're accurate. Um, personally, I think just based on, on, on the extreme risk of him, I would actually have him higher just for fun. Um, but that's me. I, I think that uh, he's a guy that we're going to see. It's going to be out four or five years, though. Maybe three or four. How about that? Um, the next one, number nine, is uh, Andre Jackson. Um, Andre, of course, debuted with the Dodgers last year. Um, had some nice appearances. I thought uh, he showed that he can be a major league pitcher, and I expect him to play the season with the Dodgers this year. Um, so he's getting, he's coming around. I mean, he's a, he's a converted outfielder. Um, that's where he played in college, became a pitcher, um, then had Tommy John surgery. So he's a little bit behind. Um, but now he's really, I think he's started to really catch up and it shows. Um, and his, his flow is, uh, right up there with Dustin May. Number eight, and this was the biggest surprise for me because, um, it, it kind of, it stood out actually. Eddie's Leonard. Um, he showed up at uh, number eight, and so uh, we wrote an article about him uh, last month. He also had a, was kind enough to interview with me, and um, he can play all over the field. I do see him as a future Kike Hernandez type. I don't know if he's going to be able to field all those positions as well as Kike, but I think he might. He could hit better. Um, so he's he excites. He's one of those exciting ones that. Um, I'm pretty. I, I think that that's a, a guy that's going to be in the major leagues within a couple years. Number seven is a 2020 draft choice, Landon Knack. He's going to debut this year. There's I, I, I mean, he's going to start in AAA, but I do think he'll debut. The question will be: Is it going to be as a starter or in the bullpen? Um, we shall see, but he can, you know, he can get get the ball up to 98, and his control is super good. Um, that's that's going to be a differentiator. Um, he is a little bit older. He was born in you know 1997, you know, and so he's what 23, almost uh, 24. Maybe he'll be 25 this year. Um, so he's he's he, I think he's ready though. Um, number six again, going um, backwards. Is outfielder, so it's spelled Andy Pages, but it's Pages, uh, and I'm probably wrong. So um, forgiveness in advance with that. Power is is elite. Um, he he can mash, and so he's just growing. He's still growing into being a baseball player. He's still a young guy. Um, he's just twenty, just turned twenty one. Um, he's gonna. He definitely will. Uh, you know, see a lot of time in Double A. Uh, and I think he'll he'll make it up to AAA. It's just he's one of those guys with, um, you know, to harness the power, you know, you got to harness that, but also you don't want him, you know, striking out 200 times, 
um, unless there's a, you know an elite walk rate, which um, right now we're not we're not seeing that yet. Um, number five is uh, Ryan Pepio. Um, we've had um, you know good contact with him in the past, so we have plenty of articles about him. Um, also, uh, a Dodger poke, uh, Casey Porter has has some uh, n- newer information on him on his site. Um, I, you know, Pepio has the, the a major league changeup. It, it's elite, um, and we'll see. You know, if that gets if it's if he's ready to get there. I mean, he did struggle a little bit in AAA and controls part of the issue. Um, some are saying that he could be a bullpen guy. I think though, if he can um, harness the 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 uh, control a bit, I think that gives him a better chance as a starter. But you know, his fastball grades out, they say here on the 2080 scale, so that's where we come from, fastball grades at a 70, change up an 80. So there's not a lot of 80s given for any skill. And so that's pretty darn cool. Number four, it seems like this guy's almost fallen through the cracks a little bit just in terms of talking about him, but it's Michael Bush. Um, they have him at second base. You know, he could be an outfielder, first baseman, DH, um, who knows. And I, I do expect the DH to be... Um, in the National League next year. But, um, I mean, they say here, the future. And this is where I agree. Bush resembles Max Muncy as both a hitter and defender and projects to be a similar player. I'll take it. But he will be, should begin 2020 at AAA. Um, don't be surprised if he doesn't, if he doesn't debut in 2022 with the Dodgers, though, which would be pretty darn cool. Number three, and I, I, I'm totally on board with this, is um, Miguel Vargas, third base. But he also plays a lot of first. I really hope he can play third base because he he will be the the answer. Um, his um, I, I really like they have his hits hit uh, number at sixty five. I I have it higher. I have it more like seventy or seventy five. I think he's going to be. Um, I know people don't care about batting average, but it's still a good little number. I think he's going to be a consistent three hundred hitter in the major leagues and maybe even higher. Um, and I've said it before, and I, it's a tough comparison, but if you go way back in the day, um, another Miguel, Miguel Cabrera, when he was thinner, um, I think there's there's some comparisons there in terms of the hit. Um, just the, the, will the power come? Right now it's it's up, getting better and better, but um, will he be able to stick at third? And gosh, I really hope so. If he does, that's, that, that's a game changer, to be honest, for the, for the whole organization. Um, then you don't have to worry about a third baseman after JT's done. Numero dos, Bobby Miller, our first pick in in 2020. Um, he's dynamic. Um, if you watch him pitch, you can see that you know how that um, the action and everything. He's really fun to watch. He's a big kid, um, and he's oh man, he's uh, what 20? He'll be 23 um, in April. Um, and they still, you know, the, one of the things is, um, you know, just the lack of, you know, he came from college, basically, you know, did some work, but it was during the pandemic. Um, last year, he threw what, I think he's got a total I don't know, 57 innings in the minors. So there's a ways to go in terms of building him up. Um, he probably will start at double A, but he could go in triple A and I, it, I just I can see him making a contribution um, in the bullpen by the end of the year. We'll see about that. I mean, um, you know, like with any pitcher, command. But he, he you know, they have him. His fastball is a seventy, which is really good. But in slider is a fifty. But then curveball sixty and a, and a changeup is sixty. And his control is a fifty. So that that you know that's still above average. We you know that's going to need to improve. And number one, this should not surprise anybody. Um, where it's the now 20 year old, is he 20? Good Lord. Yes, he is. Um, Diego Cartaya, um, off the charts in so many different ways, uh, the way in terms of his overall ability, um, you know, they have him, uh, overall, they have him as a 65, um, his skills hit 55. I think it might, that might be higher power, 60 speed, 30. He is a catcher. Fielding 60, arm 70. So one of the things is he did have a back injury, it looks like, last year. I mean, it, the Dodgers are really tight about that information. But um, Baseball America says that he, the, he has back injuries. Um, 
And so at, at the end of the day, though, I think he's he's the reason that they were able to uh, let go of Kiebert Ruiz, um, who that still kind of sucks in some ways, but, you know, that, that has to happen um, in order to get quality players. So Baseball America also has some cool things. They have the best tools. So really quick, best hitter for average, Miguel Vargas, no surprise. Best power hitter, Andy Pajes, yes. Best strikes on discipline, Jacob Amai, who did not show up on this top 10. He had a tough year last year, but I think he's coming around. Um, fastest base runner, Jaron Kendall, who is exposed to the um, the uh, Rule 5 draft. So eh, it's going to be tough. Best athlete, James Outman. That's between Outman and Kendall. Those are two really good athletes. Outman did get protected. Um, best fastball, Bobby Miller. Best curveball, Clayton Beater. Um, best slider, Carlos Duran. So Carlos was at, uh, started at Rancho and finished the year at Great Lakes. Um, let's see, best changeup, Ryan Pepio. No surprise. Best control, Landon Knack. Um, best defensive catcher is Cartaya. Best defensive infielder, Amaya for sure. Best infielder arm, Lionel Valera. I believe he's also available in the Rule 5 draft. Um, best defensive outfielder, Jaron Kendall. Yeah. Best outfielder field arm, uh, Jose Ramos. So that's the guy next year. He's going to be in the top 10. I did uh, uh, a writer, or, or an article on him um, know, a couple months ago now. And then um, one of the other things Baseball America does, and I'm trying to click to it here, is, uh, oh, they're making me sign in. How dare they? Uh, sorry about that, folks. We shall get this going. Um, let's see. Top 30s, so they have um, the future out, the future outlook of the um, of what the organization uh, starting lineup would be in the pitchers, and so, and they have it projected out for 2025. And so for the Dodgers, 2025. Here's what they project, and this is always really interesting and highly speculative. Catcher Will Smith, yes. First base Michael Bush, who will be 27 at that time. Second base Gavin Lux. Third base Miguel Vargas. Let's hope so. Shortstop, Trey Turner. Let's hope that he gets signed. Left field will be Andy Pajes. Center fielder, Cody Bellinger. He's only going to be 29 by then. Let's hope we can keep him. Right fielder will be Mookie Betts. And the designated hitter, Max Muncy. So I really like how that all sounds. And then the pitching. Um, this sounds pretty good to, in my opinion too. But number one, starter will be Bueller, Walker Bueller. Number two, Julio Arias. Number three, Dustin May. Number four, Bobby Miller. And they have number five is Tony Gonzalez. And then there's a closer, Bruce Dark Gratterall. Um, if, if Gonzalez can get back to where he was before, at the end of 2020, he was really good. And the Dodgers, for some reason, sat him down for like 17 days for the playoffs. And he's never kind of bounced back. And then he's getting hurt, things like that. So um, all the best to Tony. I did get a brief chance to talk to him during one of his rehab starts. Very good guy. And um, so he's someone to root for, and I, I think he's going to be – I've always thought he, he could be a really good reliever, um, but I think he still has what it takes to be a starter. But I think they're going to – hopefully they have enough for the starters, and who knows who they may sign um, or trade for. Um, if you want to, you know, find you know find out more about that, check out um, the, the Dodgers Nation uh, podcast. There's, a, you know, two or three of those – podcast it seems daily that comes out um you know whether it's the the once or twice weekly with clint basius and brooke smith or the uh the ones that come out with 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 uh doug mckeon or mclean mckeon sorry doug, doug doug mccain um so and then um just some other podcasts to look you know to look out for um you know the uh, the Locked On Dodgers guys. Um, they have a uh, a similar podcast to what I just did. I have not listened to theirs yet because I don't want to. I don't want to steal from them. They're good guys. You know, I know both Jeff and Vince, and uh, they do good work. So I would watch that. I'm going to watch it later tonight after I've published this one, um, and then um, also of course our own um, Dodger Pope Casey Porter. So I would follow those, and and. You know, keep up with them. Those it's good, fun, positive things that covers a lot of different types of things. Some of it's serious, some of it's not so serious. I mean, especially with Clinton Brooke, they they have a good time. And uh, so, um, hopefully, this is 
been uh, you know good good and informative for you. Um, please link, subscribe, comment, all those good things, and um, let's hope that this lockout gets solved quickly. Spring training is at risk, and being able to go watch the full spring training season, let alone the regular season, uh, a lot of us go out there to to Camelback to watch the Dodgers and it's a, it's a great time. Uh, let's hope they get their act together. And I'm going to end this with the only appropriate thing talking about that is fire Rob Manfred. All right. Have a good one.